What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragonflight video. Hope you're all doing very, very well. Let's talk about some more BlizzCon news. We got information about the Delve system that is coming in The War Within, which is the next expansion, of course, for World of Warcraft. We're going to talk about Delves and um, everything to do with them in this video. Well, there's a couple of different uh, tabs I've got here, and then I also have this tab. We'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> Let's just start off here. Sorry, I'm a little bit sick. Try to do my best not to snivel all over you guys. Delves are quick adventures for one to five players as a solo experience with friends or even as a dungeon group. These adventures are integrated into the outdoor realm as a new end game pillar alongside dungeons, raids, and PvP. This is really important. So they are intending for this to become an evergreen permanent feature in World of Warcraft, at least for the next like three expansions or so. Um, this is going to be your sort of pinnacle outdoor world content okay so for dungeons it's like heroic dungeons flat mythic dungeons and then mythic plus and then you scale all the way up to plus 20s and higher right this is like you do outdoor world events or, or world quests and then like world events you kill a world boss and then there's delves as like the ultimate outdoor world experience designed to provide variety flexibility and replayability there are 12 delves available at launch that take place through a Kaz Algar and in various environments. So there's also a 13th delve that Morgan Day spoiled. It's like a secret one that we'll have to go find, just so you know. Here's just the facts. 10 to 15 minute adventures. Players will unravel the mysteries and seek out treasures through a Kaz Algar. New seasonal rewards with a narrative tie-in and NPC companion. So this is a screenshot of what a delve looks like from the outside. From what we understand... <clears throat> These are supposed to be just integrated into the open world as best as they possibly can be. So it's kind of just like there's a cave that you go into and there's kind of like a foggy door here. They, I think, I remember Ian saying that they don't, these are not intended to be instanced activities. What I think is going to end up happening, um, sorry, they're not instanced like dungeons and raids are where you walk through a door and there's a loading screen. They don't want there to be any loading screens at all. You just walk through this like foggy door and you end up um, being right into the delve itself. You, you start the adventure, okay? So <clears throat> what I think is going to end up happening is that you're going to walk through this kind of door and you're going to go into a different shard. You know how sometimes you'll like join a Mythic Plus group and then you'll be standing in Veldraken and you get accepted to the Mythic Plus group and you hit join and suddenly everybody around you disappears and then a whole bunch of new people populate and you're in like a different shard of the game. I think that's what's going to happen here because otherwise... If you can just walk into a delve with no loading screen and no shard different, no sharding, then any other random player could also just walk in to the delve that you're doing and then get the rewards at the end without maybe having to do any of what you're like any of the difficult parts of the delve. So I'm assuming you're going to get like sharded a little bit. <laughs> I'm stop saying that word now, but so that you're kind of in your own instance, but there's no loading screen. I think that's what we're looking at here. Okay. But their intent is for this to just be an extension of the outdoor world, okay? That's what it's going to be. And I think we can equate this to essentially what Ian talked about is that they've learned lessons from things like Torghast, things like Island Expeditions, and even the Forbidden Reach vaults. They've kind of taken all the learnings from that and they've pushed it into this system. And they finally made a system in the outdoor world that will actually have some end game implications. I'll talk about that in a second. Season 1 is going to introduce a new NPC companion brand, Bronzebeer. These companions will level up as you journey, uh, as they journey with you. And they can be customized to be a complement for your character, whether you need them to do more damage or heal you for a bit. So again, they're intending for these to be role agnostic, they said. So you can go in as a healer, a tank, or a DPS. You're going to get brand Bronzebeard. He's going to have a talent tree. They didn't show us it, but this is what Ian said. There'll be a little talent tree that you can work on. That is going to be account-wide as well, that little talent tree. So if you do it on your main, as soon as you bring your ult in, you'll have a giga-juiced Bram Bronzebeard. He's going to be really buffing you while you're doing these... Um, <clears throat> these delves, which is really, really cool. Entering one of these adventures won't involve any loading screens to transition into a delve portal. As you solve the mysteries, we kind of talked about that a second, uh, a minute ago. As you solve the mysteries and puzzles within each and defeat the boss at the end, you'll make your way to a room overflowing with treasure, offering currency, gold, and chances at cosmetics and more. If you have the right key, you may even be able to open any of the large resplendent chests that will show from time to time. These keys can be earned from doing other delves, outdoor gameplay, or a weekly quest. 
these items will be balanced against dungeon and raid loot. So there's two things happening here. You're going to go in and do a delve. There's a bunch of little chests that give you currency and gold and stuff, which is good. Cosmetics, which is actually very cool. Then there's going to be a big chest. You can't open that unless you have a key. And getting a key is going to be a little bit more difficult than just like they're not just going to be all over the place. The gear that is in that chest is probably I'm just guessing here. It's probably going to be like champion tier level or maybe even a little bit lower. This is where your like kind of alt ketchup gear I think could come from. The gear that's in that chest is not really intended to be an end game piece of loot. Okay. That's my understanding of it. Now, there is going to be an end game track for the outdoor world content. So they talked about this. This is what the new weekly vault's going to look like. Raid dungeons and world instead of raid dungeon and PVP. They are getting rid of the PVP track. It's gone. Essentially, what they said for PVPers is that you're going to get double the amount of conquest that you normally get or even more. And so you're just going to be able to buy the items that you want. And I think people were complaining that the vault they were getting out of the loot for PVP purposes was not um, was like random and not what they were looking for. If you want to go get a raid trinket or something, you're still going to have to go do the raid, of course, even if you're a PVPer. But like having a PVP track itself was apparently not servicing these people. So they're going to get way more conquest, which is great. This is now a world track. So complete one delve or world activity complete four and then complete nine so i don't know what world activity means it does not say world quest but i'm assuming this is going to include outdoor world events that are going on a world boss outdoor world quests and then of course delves and they did say that there's going to be different tiers of um delves for example will have several difficulty tiers resulting in a variety of potential rewards. So <clears throat> I think in order to advance this track the best you possibly can, you should probably just do delves. I don't know exactly what the loot is going to look like. Ian did say, though, the loot from the world track is not going to be mythic raid level quality. It's going to be below that. They don't know exactly where it's going to be, but I think it's going to sit somewhere at heroic raid level. This is what Ian also said basically at heroic raid level or a little bit lower, maybe depending on what outdoor world content you do. I'm not really entirely sure, right? Because if you're doing Mythic Plus and you only do a Mythic Plus 10, it's going to give you a, a, a reward at Mythic Plus 10. If you do a Mythic Plus 16, like this guy did, it's going to give you a better reward. So I'm assuming on the world track, if you're completing delves, that will be like the best that would be like a mythic plus 16 versus doing a mythic plus 10 you see what i'm saying it's gonna be like better if you kill the world boss i'm assuming that's gonna be a lot worth a lot that might give you the best reward possible because it's perceived to be the most difficult level of content for the outdoor world as opposed to just doing uh, a bunch of world quests like a little tiny world quest i mean like oh i should get good rewards it's like probably if you're just doing world quests you're gonna get less rewards than if you're doing delves and the world boss that's my that's my assumption. We have no idea about that. But that's just what I'm thinking. Okay. For the first time, players who take part in outdoor world activities will be able to earn rewards from the Great Vault, whether it's from completing outdoor world, uh, sorry, outdoor objectives or by doing delves. Players will be able to unlock rewards based on level of difficulty. Rewards can be potentially reach the level of heroic rating or close to mythic plus 15 dungeon range. So this is pretty good. And I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I think that there is... It's really important to, to sort of understand how good this is going to be potentially for the player base. Right now, my main character gets all three tracks on the raid and all three tracks on Mythic Plus when I'm starting a new season. As the season goes on and on, I don't necessarily get as much, but I'm getting six options on my main character. My alt characters never do the raid because I have to pug the raid and I kind of hate doing that. I just never do the raid on my alt characters. I might have to start doing that, but... I do Mythic Plus, but I don't always do a ton of Mythic Plus. And then I have that PvP track. So for my alt characters, I only ever get one or two reward possibilities, like period, versus my main who gets six, like every week. This, I think, for alt characters is going to open up another track where instead of me just getting one or two, I might also go into the open world and get another two of these. So I'll have four options instead of one or two, which I think is absolutely fantastic 
for my alts in terms of catching up on gear and then also having a really good gear option at the end of the week in the vault. I'm also very interested to see exactly what pieces of gear are going to be in the world track because there might be trinkets in here that are actually like really good. And if you have a trinket that's like 5 to 10 item levels below the rest of your gear, it's actually not the end of the world because trinkets don't give main stat. They don't give stamina. They just give usually a secondary stat. There might be a stamina trinket, of course, but they usually give a secondary stat and then they have a proc effect. And having that trinket be 10, maybe 12, maybe 15 item levels below the rest of your gear is not the end of the world if it's just one slot. If it has a really, really powerful effect that you really love, it might actually be worth farming it on the world tier, and it's okay that it's only going to end up ever being a Mythic plus 15 dungeon range or a Heroic raid piece, okay? Because the rest of your gear by the end of a, of a season is going to be like that Mythic level. This thing won't be, but that's okay. I think it's actually a perfect range for them to put this piece of gear into. Some cosmetic rewards looking pretty cool. You got mushroom hats and candles and all kinds of stuff. This thing looks really cool. Ian talked about this. <clears throat> Players who take part in Delves will also be able to unlock a new customizable flying mount. So this is like getting your, uh, doing the raid on Heroic and getting a mount or getting your KSM for Mythic Plus and getting a mount. This is the exact same thing. Doing Delves, doing them at a high level is going to reward you with this really, really cool customizable uh, flying mount, which is, it's like a flying machine, right? It has all these different customizations. I love this. I think it's amazing. This is a great little addition to the game. So that's another thing to look forward to. I think all in all, this Delve system becoming a new pillar of Endgame is going to be really good, right? So you've got Raining, PvP, Mythic Plus, and now Delves being the premier outdoor world uh, pillar of Endgame progression. I think this is a great idea. I think it's going to give you really, really good gear for your ults in particular, and then it might have a couple of really interesting chase items, like a, a really good trinket or something, that you're okay sacking some item levels on because it has such a powerful effect that you really enjoy. It might be worth sort of having that as well. Also, you're going to have Brand Bronze Spirit, which you can level up, and then he's account-wide, so whenever your ults get in there, they'll have a really juiced-up talent tree already. They're only meant to be 10 to 15-minute little adventures. I love this. I think this is a great system, and it's something that I am absolutely going to be jumping into, particularly on my alt characters who don't jump into the raid. It gives me another track to progress on. So what do you guys think about this? I would love to hear all of your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about Delves coming into World of Warcraft in the next expansion and then in beyond. This is a new evergreen system. Do you like the idea of this? Do you think this is a good way for them to incorporate kind of world content as an end game feature? Because I think that's a great way for them to do it, but I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Please let me know. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I love you all. I will see you in the next one.